If you've started losing your hair and you're not exactly sure what's going on, you have come to the right video. We're basically stripping the topic of all the fancy terms and technicalities. And in plain English, we're going to explain the most common types of hair loss affecting men today. What to look out for, what the differences are, what the similarities are, etc. After you've watched this video, you'll be able to tell which kind of hair loss is affecting you as well as the treatment options available. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you are new to the channel, do make sure to hit subscribe. And for those of you that are personally worried about your own hair loss, what you can do is click the link in the description to take the HairGod hair loss quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss. Then you'll receive free, personalized, expert information on how to regrow healthy hair. So the three most common causes of hair loss in men are one, pattern hair loss, two, alopecia areata, and three, telogen effluvium. Of these, by far the most common will be pattern hair loss, which is called androgenetic alopecia. Around 90 to 95% of men with hair loss will have this. It's what you basically call boldness, and it's what we mostly discuss on this channel. Now, the characteristic of this type of hair loss is that it progresses in a very predictable way, hence the term pattern boldness. In the large majority of men, it will start from the temples. These will begin to thin and recede and soon the entire frontal hairline will also follow. Eventually, the top of the head or the so-called vertex area then follows along. The affected areas get thinner and thinner until there is nothing left. In severe cases, the entire top of the head will eventually go bold. The immediate cause of pattern boldness is susceptibility to a male hormone called dihydrotestosterone or DHT. The DHT attacks the hair follicles, progressively shrinking them. The hairs keep getting smaller and finer until in the end, they are so tiny that they can't even make it out of the skin's pores. Alopecia areata is very different. It's an autoimmune condition, meaning that your body's own immune system attacks the hair follicles. The reasons for this are not fully understood. And what's understood even less is why alopecia areata looks the way that it does, which is basically completely random. Remember how we said that pattern boldness is very predictable? Well, alopecia areata is nothing like that. The hair follicles are attacked in discrete, clearly defined areas of the scalp. These typically have a round or oval shape and they can appear anywhere. On the front, top, crown, wherever. Even the back and the size of the head, which are immune to pattern hair loss, they're easily affected by alopecia areata. The last major type of hair loss is telogen effluvium. This is when the follicles on your head synchronize the hair growth cycles, with the result that many of them enter the resting phase at the same time. During the resting phase, the hair falls out, making way for new hair to grow out. In healthy heads, this process happens independently across 100,000 or so hair follicles meaning that only a small percentage of these will be in the resting phase at any one time. But when a large percentage of our follicles enter the resting phase at the same time, the result is massive hair shedding and visible thinning. Telogen effluvium is typically the body's reaction to a severely stressful event called a triggering event. The triggering event usually occurs around three months prior. There are various types of triggering events, but typically there's something like severe illness, major trauma, surgery, or a change in medications. But it can also be something more subtle, like a nutritional deficiency or psychological stress. Telogen effluvium is more common in women, where it often follows pregnancy. But it can also affect men. Now guys, before we go on, I want to clarify that there's many other types of hair loss, aside from the three that we're discussing in today's video. But they are so rare and will affect so few men that we didn't want to include them in today's video. We just wanted to keep it simple and above all practical for you. Now, if you start losing hair, the first question to be asking is what type of hair loss is it? Is it localized or is it diffused? Localized means it affects only certain parts of your head and diffused means that it's all over. If it's diffused, it's probably telogen effluvium. If it's localized, it's either going to be pattern boldness or alopecia areata. For the overwhelming majority of men, the hair loss will be localized, which means that you then have to distinguish between pattern boldness and alopecia areata. The second question regards the onset and progression of the condition. Pattern hair loss comes in slowly, often without noticeable shedding. So that means that you might not even notice hair falling out, for example, in the shower or on the pillow. And unless you intervene, pattern hair loss will keep on getting worse, again, very slowly. But alopecia areata is very different. It comes in abruptly, literally over the space of a few weeks or months and it can then also go away on its own, leaving your head looking like it used to. 
In pattern boldness, this is almost impossible. Pattern boldness never gets better on its own. The third question has to do with the specific location of the hair loss. As mentioned, pattern hair loss will either start from the temples and frontal hairline of the crown, but alopecia areata can start from any part of the scalp. Now, I've summarized all this for you on this table. Going from left to right, you can see how pattern hair loss, alopecia areata, and telogen effluvium compare. So, looking at the first row, distribution of hair loss. Pattern hair loss, as we said, starts at the temples or crown. Alopecia areata can strike anywhere on the scalp, and telogen effluvium affects more or less the entire head. Pattern hair loss is unique in that its onset is gradual. In contrast, both alopecia areata and telogen effluvium are abrupt. They come in quickly, and can also resolve just as quickly. With pattern hair loss, there is no spontaneous resolution. Unless you treat it, it's a one-way street to being more or less bold. Associated with pattern hair loss, gradual onset is the absence of shedding. This again sets it apart from the other two alopecias. With regard to the typical age of appearance, for pattern hair loss, this can be any time after puberty. Same more or less with telogen effluvium, which is usually an adult condition. Alopecia areata is unique in this aspect in that it tends to affect younger people and children. The final row deals with the differences in appearance. In pattern hair loss, the areas that are affected start to get progressively thinner. Eventually, all the hairs in these areas disappears and the hairline is displaced. Alopecia areata strikes in clearly defined patches that are generally completely bold or almost completely bold. So no fine hairs, nothing. When these bold patches end, you have completely normal hair growth. So there's no gradient or anything, it's simply black and white. And in telogen effluvium, there are no bold patches, just, just diffuse thinning all over the head. Now a complication that makes all of this difficult to figure out is that the various conditions can actually coexist. So you can very well have pattern boldness with frontal recession and crown thinning, and at the same time have random patches of alopecia areata. For example, you can see in this photo a man with severe thinning on the crown from pattern hair loss. And below that, a classic patch of alopecia areata, which partially overlaps with the crown pattern boldness. Notice the weak miniaturized hairs in the pattern hair loss at the crown, how different the appearance is compared to the completely bold patch of alopecia areata. So for pattern hair loss, there are two FDA approved medications, finasteride and minoxidil. Finasteride works by inhibiting the production of DHT, which is the hormone that directly causes hair loss. Minoxidil doesn't really bother with the DHT. It just directly stimulates the follicle to grow more hair. Minoxidil also works in female pattern hair loss, which we didn't discuss today. Both these medications can be effective in arresting the progression of pattern boldness. Where they struggle, especially minoxidil, is in growing out new hair, particularly the parts of the scalp that have gone completely bold. Once the boldness has progressed to the point where there are no fine hairs left, it's very, very difficult to reverse. Will, the founder of HairGuard, recently gave us an interview discussing the eight steps that he took to reverse his own pattern hair loss. He did this 100% naturally and without any medications. I'm going to link you to Will's video in the description for you to check out after this video. When it comes to alopecia areata and telogen effluvium, there are actually no FDA approved medications. Telogen effluvium typically resolves on its own, so doctors will often recommend a watchful waiting type of strategy, where you give it some time and only intervene if it doesn't go away on its own. Alopecia areata also has a very good prognosis. A significant percentage of those who develop it will grow back their hair within one year. If that doesn't happen, there's a good chance that it will become chronic, waxing, and waning with time. Dermatologists will then use a wide variety of off-label medications to treat it, ranging from minoxidil to steroids and immunosuppressants. These are often very hit and miss. Some patients can see dramatic improvements, but others will get no benefits whatsoever. The good news is that if you have alopecia areata, is that it's a condition that has been reported to respond very well to natural treatments. For example, we recently did a video that you can see on the screen now on a natural treatment that's shown to have a whopping 87% success rate. And you can also click the video on the screen now to learn the eight steps that we'll use to regrow his hair. I'll see you in the next video.